Hi everyone, I hope you're ready to try something brand new. I have not tried this before. Well, okay, I tried once, awful fail, did not pay attention to all the rules. This is the bloom technique, and this is where painting meets chemistry. It's very exact. There's three components, and you have to get them all right. If you mess up one, down goes your painting. Bad. So let's go down to the table and I'll show you those three steps and we will try to do this. Now, there are three major components to doing a bloom. The first component is your pillow paint. That is your white base coat that goes on the canvas before anything else. That is made with house paint. You don't have to use this brand. You don't have to use gloss. You can use satin, you can use semi-gloss, depending on your preference. You do have to be very careful in what you do next with it. So, number one, don't shake the can. You wanna carefully, slowly stir it. You wanna get as few bubbles as possible. And this is because you cannot torch this. There is no torching in the bloom technique. If you torch, you will ruin it, it will crack, it will be awful. Don't torch. So that's your first major lesson, no torching. Then the next thing is you need Golden GAC 800. Now, do you have to add the Golden GAC 800? No but if you add it, you are far less likely to end up with a crack. Do you need a lot of it? No, for every eight ounces of white house paint, you need one ounce of GAC. So. If you get a little more than you need, it's not a problem. If you don't put enough, it's a problem. Going to make that paint work better and smoother. So I'm going to stir this nicely and I'm going to put you on pause for a minute while I do that and we'll move on to the next step. Okay we are back for step two. Step two is making your pour medium and mixing your colors. For your pour medium this is also bare premium interior exterior high gloss but this is and I'm going to bring it up close so you can see that deep base 8300 this is untinted paint it's gloppy and thick and that's what you want now again don't have them shake the can you're trying to avoid bubbles you're going to mix that 50 50 with your minwax polycrylic gloss i left that can open because when you mix your colors if your paint is too thick, add a little more Minwax. No water. There is no water allowed in anything. Don't add water. So you're gonna stir very slowly those two together, 50-50, and you want a nice flowing paint that leaves a bit of a trace but goes in. If it's not thin and, you know, if you're not getting the right consistency, add a little Minwax. Then you're going to take your paints, four colors that I'm going to be working with today. So we're going to work with Arteza Pearl Pistachio Green, Arteza Pearl Amethyst Purple, I have U.S. Art Supplies Violet Interference Pearl, and I have Folk Art Metallic Royal Gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little of our pore medium into each of these cups. Then take your paint and we're going to put just a little bit of paint and not a lot of paint. You'll be surprised how little paint you need to get that base good. How much paint do you need? Well, it depends on the paint you're using. So put it in, stir it up. Now it's a little gloppy, so I can either put a little more pour medium in because I added too much paint 
or I could add a little more Minwax to thin it to get the consistency I want. So you want it to be just barely leaving a trace there. So we're running right down, a little bit of a mound on a mound, but not much. If you think it's too thick, just put a touch of Minwax, and I do mean just a little bit, not a lot, teeny bit. Again, try and stir gently when you're stirring. You want to keep as, you know, you want to keep the air bubbles out. You're not going to keep them all out till you get the right consistency. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these paints, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, we are ready for the final, the third and final component, which is your cell activator. So to make your cell activator, you need four things. Number one, main ingredient, Floetrol. Now this is American Floetrol. So this recipe is for American Floetrol. If you have Australian Floetrol, you don't need these extra ingredients. You can just use Amer Australian Floetrol and your paint. So I have two cups because I want to make two different color cell activators because I have two canvases I want to play with. So get a tablespoon measure into each cup. Put two tablespoons. Here's where you see, I said chemistry. Got to get your measurements right. Two tablespoons of Floetrol. I'm using the recipe that I saw somebody use. And they said that this works. Next ingredient, glow all. So one teaspoon, littler spoon, one teaspoon glue all. Now I'm gonna pause you a minute while I clean up that glue spill and we'll move on. So our next ingredients are our Amsterdam paint. And most people use this, this is titanium white. I also want to play with some permanent red violet for cell activator. One teaspoon paint. All right, and we're gonna put one teaspoon again into the other cup. Now here's the final ingredient. This is what helps American Floetrol become Australian Floetrol. Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner. Don't need a lot. I've put it into this little plastic bottle with a nice top on it because I want four drops, just four little drops in my cup. Okay, that's all you need. Just a teeny little bit of that and we're gonna mix it up. I brought my Floetrol back over here because if it is too thick, we thin it with a little more Floetrol. Do not thin it with water. So let me stir these up and we'll be ready to start painting. Hold on. Okay, after all that, we are finally ready to paint. So I've got my canvas on my turntable because you're gonna to wanna to spin this. And we are ready. So you're going to start with pouring your pillow coat on. All right, next we're going to put our colors down. Don't need a lot. I didn't make a lot. And for this first one, I'm going to use our white cell activator. So on top of everything, we're going to put a puddle of the cell activator. Now, 
Hold on a minute, let me get the hair dryer set up and we'll be ready to blow. Now you don't have to blow this with a hair dryer. A lot of people blow it with their mouth. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna try this one with the hair dryer and see what happens. just a bit. Oh, you see those bubbles coming up? All right, we're gonna let it sit a second. All right, we're gonna let that sit for just a sec. Let the cells come up a bit more. And then we're gonna spin. All right, we'll give it the first spin. such depth and such shine. I think I'm going to give it one more little spin. All right, we're going to move that to the side and let that drip a little. There's so much shimmer here between the pearl paints and the gold metallic and that interference violet. It is just super shimmer. Okay, we are ready for round number two. The difference this time is instead of the white cell activator, we are going to use the red violet cell activator. All right, again, this is our house paint for our pillow paint. Again, we're going to put our colors on. So we're going to start with the purple again. our cell activator and this time our cell activator is that permanent red violet. Alright and again we're gonna get the hair dryer and give it a quick blow. So far, so good. Let me just mouth blow this a bit. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I think I almost need to put something more in the middle here and blow it again. Because this side is so bad. This side is so pretty and this side just didn't do. Maybe I'm going to tilt it this way just a little. I'm going to move some of that to this side before we spin. Alright, let's spin. Uh, 
Oh, look at that. That is pretty. Okay, I'm not messing with it anymore. I'm loving how the this veining is just running down the sides. All right, I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna put it next to the other one and then I'll bring you in for a close up. Nice try here with the right ingredients finally. Okay, call me crazy, but I have leftover paint. I have another panel. This is the first time doing an oval. Boy, was tape in the back of that thing no fun. All right, so I have extra paint. I have some extra time. This may make this video a little long. Fast forward if you don't want to watch the third painting and you just want to come in at the end. So we're going to put our pillow paint down. Now because this is so big, um, I think we're going to do multiple bloom puddles. All right, now, like I said, I'm gonna do multiple puddles so that we get stuff all the way down the line. Okay, I am ready for this. Mouth blow or hair dryer blow? Oh. You know what? I think we'll start again with the hair dryer and then we'll mouth blow. that sit a second and see what happened. Oh, I am seeing some pretty stuff coming up. Very pretty. Oh, look how pretty it is starting to come up. Give it another second and then we're going to start spinning. Because I see all this beautiful stuff coming up as it sits. Oh, I'm so happy. so much over here. Now I'm very upset that I twirled it too much. I lost a whole mess of pretty stuff right off the side because I gave it too hard a spin. I wish I could put something right there. I have more cell activator. I just don't have much more paint, but let's see if I can do something. some of these larger part places. Get a little more something. Alright. Well, I'm not sure I like that one, but very different. Sort of spun it too hard. All right, well, it's very interesting looking, that's for sure. 
All right, I'm gonna move this over to the other table and then I'll bring you in for a close up on all three paintings. Hold on. Okay, we are ready for the close ups. So I'm gonna get you the best view I can on these. But look at the, I don't know how much you can see, but I know there's some glare, but you can also see that sparkle and that shine that's in this one. So this was my very first try with the white. The lines are a little harder to see, but we'll see how that, how that dries and how much more of it you can see. But look at this, so pretty. So that's number one. We move over to number two. And here it looks like the webbing's dying a little, so I'm hoping that I didn't make it too thin and that it's gonna hold most of this webbing when it dries. This is the one where I sort of messed up that corner, trying to add some extra when it wasn't working because I was offside. But all in all, pretty good second attempt. Now the third one, the extra that I threw in at the last minute, was looking so wonderful till I spin it, spun it too hard and shot the bloom right off the sides. So I added this little guy in the center though, and look how beautiful. So we're gonna let these dry. I'll take some pictures. This was a really long one, but thank you so much for joining me. I love trying new things. And now I am a painting chemist. How's about that? See you later. Okay, everyone, it's the next morning and they've sort of dried. A lot of failure here, but I learned a lot. So this was the first one I did and you'll notice it's very textured looking. Um, you still see the veins and look at that shine. Look at the shine. Oh, such beautiful shine. I think I put too much pillow paint and that puddle of pillow paint, bad news. Made that bottom paint too thick and so it made it sort of lumpy when it dried. But otherwise, the cells worked really well. Look at the veining and the shine from that paint mix. Oh, so pretty. So salvageable, probably. Can probably just top coat this because it is really, really pretty. Second one, I think I made the cell activator a little too thin because it broke and sort of lost a bit. Again, too much pillow paint too thick, too much of it. So we've got that texture, you can see it's sort of, the thinner paint sort of sunk into the heavier paint. But again, beautiful shine, beautiful color. I may keep it just as a lesson in how to do the technique. But I think if I got the pillow paint correct and I'm a little thicker and a little less blowy, the cell activator was working and the colors are gorgeous. Here's the real fail. This one I spun too much so it blew everything off the painting and I tried to put something in the center which didn't work real well after the fact and then there's a big puddle down there because it wasn't level and it all shoo, off the paint. Now the end result is pretty, sort of a marble looking mess. And there are some veiny areas on here that are really sort of pretty. Again, this one is not as bad on the texturing thing because I blew so much of the paint off when I spun it too hard. And that's what makes me know that the other ones are probably bad and this one's still wet in the middle. The other ones are probably as bad as they are because the paint was too thick. So we need to thin the pillow paint a little bit more. Don't think I put enough GAC in. And I need to make sure I don't puddle it. And then I need to be level when I set it to dry and not spin it too hard. But as a first try on this technique, not bad. It's all a learning process. And this is the hardest type of pouring because there's so much chemistry involved in getting 
your combination of ingredients just right. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something with me while I was learning. And we're going to try this again. Have a good day.